Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're heading up into Clarksburg to work on a 2005 Land Rover LR3. Front and rear brake pads and rotors all the way around. Come join along. have 119 290 miles on the odometer we've already got the vehicle up on jack stands we've got the wheels off now we're going to start breaking down the brake pads turn the steering wheel in the direction so that it makes it easier to get at your components first thing we're going to do this was already unhooked there's no uh, brake light on so we know that this is intact and working okay it is clipped, there's no cover on the bleed screw. We're going to go ahead and take the caliper pin bolts out. You can turn these and you're going to notice that the, uh, the pin is going to rotate with them. That's because of the amount of Loctite that they use on them. If you have a 15 millimeter, in this case, it might be 15, but uh, you've got to have a thin, skinny wrench to be able to fit in here. I just use needle nose pliers. And then it'll hit, lock, and you can go ahead and remove your 13 millimeter bolt. Same thing on the bottom. I might use some, some power tools on this, but right now I'm just using some basic simple hand tools just to show the job, job can be done quite easily with these. Same thing with the bottom. Good grip on it. And then loosen those up. And then go ahead and take those bolts all the way out. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a C-clamp and we're just going to gently push the pistons back just enough that we can get it over the lip of the rotor. I do this on the top and on the bottom. And be careful. If you notice any binding, go back and forth between the top and the bottom. And once you've got them loosened up, you can lift this up and off. Have a hook ready so that you can hang it from your suspension. And what we've done is we've taken, put the hook through the middle of the caliper, hanging on the back of the upper control arm. And we've got the caliper off and out of the way. We'll get the brake pads, which are moving. That's good. We'll get these uh, out of here. And as you can see, we've got close to four or five millimeters of pads. So these are probably about half worn maybe a little bit more and this is actually a really ideal time to be replacing them get this out too. next thing we're going to do is take the caliper bracket off you'll find a lot of videos out there that are telling you 15 millimeter or 18 millimeter 12 point well these are in fact 12 point but what i've actually come up with is i'm using a 13 16 sae socket because uh, the 21 that I have is sloppy and the 20 won't fit. I don't know why. So I'm assuming this is a 21. But the 13 16 fits better than the 21. So we're going to use this to break these bolts loose. Mindful of your wires and cables, you don't want to damage anything. That's loosened up nicely. And at this point, you can go to a, a ratchet or whatever you prefer and remove these bolts. But when you're backing these bolts out, back them all back, you know, take one, back it all the way out, and then put it back in about two or three turns. That'll help keep your bracket secure while you're removing the final bolt. Go ahead and get these out of here. 
it looks like I'm doing this one manual all the way. My half inch drive socket wrench is stuck in the tightening direction only and I can't get it to change direction. So if you happen to own a Craftsman half inch drive, part number 44985, they do make a rebuild kit for this, which I have to figure out where to get my hands on one because, well, Sears doesn't exist anymore, so, but it'll tighten, but I can't loosen it, so back to manual. So lock this will come all the way out. Okay, that one's almost all the way out. Let's get this bottom one the rest of the way out. This is why you leave the top one in. getting harder to turn. so it doesn't fall on the floor. There's the top one out. And I'll slide the bracket off and inspect it kind of carefully. Your slides are in good shape. We're going to be removing those and cleaning those up. The pins are loose. You can hear them rattle around. There's probably next to no grease in there, but there's no rust. That's good. Now we're going to take this screw right here out, which in this one here is a T50. We're going to be using an impact driver, hammer type. that in there Holy shit. there's only one other way I know of to get that out of there really? it involves a chisel or drill it out right and uh, it's hard as this thing's acting but you catch the side of it you put a, a crease into it and then you bring the chisel up at an angle yeah, and try to rotate it, it. Rotate it. it. And I try to do it without mangling the screw so badly that you can't changed? Did that mean it moved? I think it did. Yay! Did it without completely destroying it. Of course, now the rotor nice and loose. Now, make sure that they are identical. You have the same set screw holding, same thick. Make sure the hat height is the same. Yeah, wow, you can see that whole millimeter of wear. 
can see it this way. You can see this the air gap in there. And then again also make sure the diameter is exactly the same. Once you know they're matched, go ahead and start cleaning. Get in here with the hub body and clean this up. Get all the rust scaling off. Go ahead and spray it from fluid film. The landings right here that your bracket goes into, try to remember to get those two. Any rust scale that you miss may cause a problem. Clean this up first, get all of the machining oil off of it. Let me go grab it. Oh, we got it right here. Get the cloth nice and soaked with some brake cleaner. And go ahead and clean the inside edge of this rotor off. Right over the to line up your set screw hole with the hole in the spindle. And go ahead and wipe down everything else. towel just to get the dust and fuzz off. Now we're going to take that set screw that we did a little bit of a little bit of damage to and we're going to oops where we're we here we are we're going to clean up that little mess so we can put this thing back on. So we're going to need to grab a grinder the edge you don't cut on it. We're going to grab some blue thread locker and we're going to put that in hand tight. We're not going to use the impact like they demonstrate in all of the other videos because that's probably what got this thing stuck in the first place. So let's go grab that blue thread locker and put that in place. That blue thread lock. Oops. One drop. Cut back on immediately so it doesn't dry out. I'll go ahead and put the rotor in place. You can use the lug nuts if you want, but I'll go ahead and put this back in. Hand tight. No impacts. bracket and we're going to take the clips out both sides and inspect the grooves they don't look too bad uh, there's a little scale right there and there's definitely some scaling up here so we're going to go grab the uh, 
abrasive wheel and clean those up. Now these abrasive wheels, you can get these down at Harbor Freight, they're about three bucks a piece. And what we're going to do now is we're going to polish these grooves. The vise would be very handy right here, so pin it down with one foot and hope it doesn't go anywhere. And as you can see, I'm going up and down, I'm not standing in any one spot for too long. Part of the reason is because I don't want to hit a spot for too long. And I also want to get the back edge and the front edge of that groove is all as well. Now once that's cleaned up a bit, that's about how it should look. We're not trying to take off metal, we're just trying to take off the rust. So we're going to get that out of there, and we're going to do the same thing on this side over here now. Now you'll find that with the bracket, this part of the bracket where it's getting polished, it's getting in the way a little bit, but the idea is, is just get in here and get this as cleaned up as you can get it. You get everything nice and shiny. Now we're going to go on to the next step, which is going to be the pins. We're going to take the pins out, grab a hold of the boot, push down on the boot to separate it from the pin, and rotate the pin out of it. Again, same thing here, push down on the boot, rotate the pin, and pull the boot it's free from the pin. Now pull the pin out, take a look at it, pull the other one out, take a look at it. Neither one of these have a rubber slide on it, so it's probably not going to make any difference, but I try to not switch them regardless. So what we're going to do now is take these out, set them off to the sides. I always do this with the openings facing me so I get my orientation correct. We're going to take some brake cleaner and a straw that I don't have. And we're going to spray fill these up. A little side note while I'm still at it. We clean those up there. We're going to clean them up right here as well. And just get them all nice and shiny. You don't need to do this to the point where you take the original machining marks out. Just get it clean. Now we'll go back to uh, the pins. Let's fill these up. Controlled sprayer is going to come right back in your face. Uh, I've said in numerous videos in the past, don't aim this towards yourself because you might get it in the face. But as long as you have a controlled blast in there, go in slow, fill it up, and then take a gun, gun cleaning brush is what I like to use. You can use any kind of brush that will clean up the, the stuff that's in here. The idea is you want to dissolve the grease that's in here and just clean up the inside of the board. Uh, if there's rust in there, you want to get an abrasive brush that will clean that up nicely. things get stuck to the pet trainers. And go ahead get it clean it up. Stuff on the other side of the garage falling down. Alright now we're gonna tip it. Ugh, see all that yuck come out of there? Okay now inspect it in your holes make sure they're all nice and clean I wish I could get you guys a view down inside of there I don't think that's gonna work no matter how hard I try but they're nice and spotless so we're gonna take our pins wipe all the grease off of them make sure that the little groove up here on the top of the pin this little tiny groove right here Make sure that that's clean because that's where your boot's going to snap into. And if that's not clean, you're going to allow moisture in here and it's going to ruin these pins. Clean up the other one as well. These are actually in remarkably nice condition. I'm really impressed. The owner of this vehicle takes extremely good care of this vehicle. 
and, and I'm happy to say that uh, he's done a very good job of it. So we're going to take the pins, take a tub of grease, and get this thing open. And a little screwdriver maybe. Uh, chisel will work, I guess. Slop up these pins real good with the grease. Get a nice thick coating of grease on the pin. Coat every inch of it. Get it even all the way up onto the top. Get some grease down in the groove. It will actually be helpful to the seal. That's a good amount of grease, I think. I'm going to go ahead and slide that pin right in. The same thing on the other one. Boy, those chickens are noisy. And you won't find a garage that usually takes quite this much time to do stuff, but... That's because they're trying to make a living and do it as quickly as they possibly can. Make sure everything moves around nice and easily. And again, my normal thing, look for that wrinkle. It pulls that boot back out like that. It's creating a vacuum, you got a good seal. Same thing on the other side, make sure it's got that seal. If it doesn't have that seal, clean things up better. Make sure you get that seal, otherwise you will get moisture in there and that moisture will rust up your pins. As long as you've got this, you're not going to get moisture in there. So now we go ahead and get the anti-seize and we're going to treat these surfaces right here. And you know, all you're doing with this is just a coating. We're not lubricating, we're just coating. All of the surfaces that you just cleaned up and got nice and shiny, you want those coated. The last thing you want to do is have moisture getting in there, trapped in there, rusting away underneath your clips, and lifting your abutment clips up and squeezing them against the ears of your brake pads. Do this on both sides. Now also be mindful when you're doing this what part of the caliper bracket is taking all of the, the pressure when you apply your brakes. Sometimes it's this area that I'm doing right now. In this case, it's down inside this groove. And get all of that surface in there nice and cleaned up. Coat it well. Make sure that you don't have any globs on the inside edge that are going to contact the rotor. And now what we're going to do is put the hardware shims, the abutment clips, in place. And in this case we're using the Tech brand ceramic brakes. Nice little kit. There's our hardware clips. We do not have the rubber pieces to go on here, but these are good so we don't need to worry about them. They're not cracked or dried out or anything like that. Here's your set of brakes. You've got an inboard and an outboard in some cases. In this particular situation, these are both identical inboard and outboard. Sometimes you'll have an, ade an adhesive backing, uh, depending on whether it's an inboard or an outboard. But always make sure that your brakes are the same. If there's differences, then you're going to have a right, a left, sometimes an in and an out. And in this case, all four of these, we stack them this way. You can see that all four of these are exactly the same. They all have the brake sensor grooves. They all have the exact same part numbers. They are all exactly the same shape. There's no differences in the curves 
size, thickness. So these are the same from one side or the other. So we're going to set those right here for the moment. And then we're going to grab our clips. Get this little bag of clips opened up. And again, we're going to do the same thing with the clips. We're going to compare all four clips. Make sure they're, are, they are the same. If there's any differences, we need to figure out why. In this case, these appear to be all exactly the same. Exactly the same size, same height, no differences in any of the tabs. They stack exactly the same. So we're going to have two on this side, two on that side. These are actually really easy. Now, let's take the first one and snap that into place. Nice and easy, and they fit correctly. And make sure that they, they're seated all the way down. Now we're going to take the brand new brakes and we're going to do a pre-fitment. Which is something I've started doing recently. Is you start off with a pre-fitment just to make sure that everything moves exactly the way it's supposed to. So you slide in and out here fairly easy. Now let's get them in their normal position. These are a little tight. They're actually a lot tight. Alright. Now we're going to start looking for a reason why. There's a lot of scale on this bracket. Okay, let's try that fitment again. Get some of this anti seize off of the brake pads. up the top and I'm going to give them a tap and then I'm going to slide down towards the bottom where they start to bind again now they slide up and down in here nice and easily and evenly don't go cockeyed on it and then go up and down make sure that they're perfectly level as long as they slide in and out relatively easily that pit that fitment is good do the same thing on the other side. Put it in. And check that fitment. Move them in and out. These are a little stiff also. So again, all the way out with them. And give them a light tap. Out with them. Light tap. And I'll push them in. Even and give it a tap again. Now they move in and out nice and smoothly. There's no binding anywhere. Now we're ready to go to the next step. We're going to take these back out, set them aside, and we're going to bolt the bracket back on. And we're just going to set this in place like this for the moment. Now we're going to take the bolts that we had in here and we're going to put one drop of blue thread locker on each one of these bolts. You'll find that the thread locker will actually act like a lubricant to help you put these in. One drop on each. And again, close up immediately so you don't dry out. Take the two bolts. Run them around each other just to distribute the, the thread locker a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and start these by hand. And bring the bracket up to where it needs to be. And then we get that bolt in. 
that bolt in. Now you can run these bolts all the way down and in. Now, actually, before I do this, I'm going to take this back out. And I'm going to I'm going to skip a step a little bit here. We're going to take these back out for the moment. I could blooper this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to take these back out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the grease, and we're going to put the grease, brake grease, and we're going to coat these slides with the brake grease, just to make them slide all that much easier. Again, keeping in mind where the pressure is exerted in these, just make sure that those areas are covered well. Not excessive amounts, you don't want any of this getting on your rotor. The whole idea here is you're just making things a little slipperier for the brake pads to move around. Everything nice, lightly coated. And now we can go ahead and put the bracket on. Again, careful trying to make sure you don't get any grease on your rotor. Bottom bolt started, then we'll get the top bolt in. And go ahead and run these bolts all the way down. Well, seeing as I've got them, I'm going to use them. Almost bottomed out. I got up the 21 millimeter wrench. We don't want to crank these down right away. Tight, back it off a half turn, or a little bit. Same thing on the bottom, get that to the snug point, back it back off, and then give it a bracket a little wiggle as you're tightening it up. just keep everything in a nice happy place and then we're going to torque these yes I said torque I'm actually going to go grab my torque wrench and we're going to torque these now unfortunately my torque wrench only goes up to 150 so we're going to bring this up to 150 as soon as I find the uh, socket that I was using there it is. we're going to bring it up to 150 and then we're going to go a little tighter from there on, by hand manually. So I got to watch out for these wires right here. Be careful with those. There we go. Oops, wrong direction. Now that's 150. I'm not going to push my torque wrench any higher than that. I just do the breaker bar. Now, we're going to go back to the brake pads, and we're going to put some fresh grease on there, make sure I didn't get any uh, yucky on here. Not get any of the grease on the brake pad material. 
just the year. And then we're going to take and we'll put this in inside first. Oh wow, see that? Nice, nice and easy. And then the outboard. Slide them in. Nice easy in and out movement, top and bottom. Too easy on the top. Come right out. Alright. Now we can go ahead and finish with the caliper. Bring the caliper up off the clip. Bring it forward, and we're going to set it right here for the moment. Actually, that won't work either. What we're going to do is push both of these pistons back, and we're going to grab the tool eh, back with it. Let's just use an old brake pad, seeing as we're here. Old brake pad, conventional C clamp. camera repositioned for you. And again, now carefully supporting the caliper. Go ahead and start pushing our pistons back one at a time. Unless you can get in the middle somehow. In my case I cannot. Or you can use the tool that's appropriate for this. I'm going to go grab just because it's easier. The whole purpose of the specialty tools is because they just make the job faster and easier. And while you're being clumsy with this, make sure that you're not hurting any of your rubber components anywhere. I'm going to take the uh, compressor, drop it a couple of times. We'll slide that in. And stop pushing the wrong lever. Uh, all because of the camera, that's why. All right, now you'll be able to see these actually going back. Make sure that there's no debris in these boots when you push them back in. No bubbles, the boot's not bubbling out anywhere. And once they're all the way down and bottomed, release the tool. And then what we're going to do, set that right there for the moment, is we're going to grab the anti seize again, and we're going to coat this part of the piston and the, these ears right here. The purpose for this is to cut down on any possibility of chatter or squeal of the brake pads. Because if they move a little bit back and forth in these surfaces, it'll make, make for a squeak. So not a, you don't have to go bananas with it, just light coating. Now do keep in mind that someday another mechanic's going to be in here and you don't want this poor guy getting turned into the tin man the first time he touches it. So, come out there, there, and just coat the areas. I can't really show you well without compromising the angle of this thing. Just get these edges right in here nicely coated. Right where the brake pads come in contact with it. And then you can go ahead and put your caliper 
over the, the brake pads. Make sure your guide pins are pushed in far enough. Try locker on each one. And again, same thing with uh, rotating it to distribute the thread locker evenly between the two, bolt, two bolts. And go ahead and put those in. It may take a little bit of playing around to get them started. And we're going to torque those down to 26 foot pounds. Twenty-six foot pounds. And then the same thing on the bottom. I gotta move my clamp. off and last but not least is our little brake clip you'll see the channel right here in the inboard brake pad you want to slide that right down into it there's a little groove set that groove right in there and then push that all the way down in there make sure it's all the way seated double check your Connections make sure everything is held where it's supposed to be Nothing's gonna rub nothing's gonna vibrate Everything moves nice and smoothly and easily So I'll go ahead and put the wheel back on and get to the other side this side's done started and then you can use your impact to spin them in. I wouldn't recommend spinning them in with a pneumatic except that these are solid. If you've got the type with the acorn, the metal sleeves over them, they tend to be a problem, a little bit of a problem. So, wait a Jack stand out from underneath. Get the wheel on the ground.
and then torque them down to 103 foot pounds. Brakes 2005 Land Rover LR3. If you guys found this one helpful, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for upcoming videos. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Back brakes, part number two. Brush. Where did you go? All right. And that's a blooper scene right there.